Holy mother. Grant, you may want to see this. Hey guys, how's it going? James here from Car Audio, etc. Interesting little uh, video today. Before I, you know, get into it, not really do anything with these, I just want to give you guys a quick little showcase of them. Uh, give you some specifications, maybe, you know, answer some questions that some of you might have. So, I have in front of me, Soundstream Human Rain 4 channel amp, and a Soundstream, one of the original Tarantula, what is this, I think this is a, um, is a two channel amp as well. No, this is a monoblock actually. I do have the specifications for them just here. Okay. So this one here, it's called the Human Rain 4. It does 125 watts RMS by 4 at 4 ohms, come on autofocus. There we go. At 4 ohms, 250 watts by 4 at 2 ohms, or 500 watts by 2 bridged at 4 ohms. Quite an old amplifier, we've had it in stock for quite a while just because of its price tag I'd say. Um, this brochure is from 2012 I believe. Both of these amplifiers are up for sale, so if you are in Christchurch and interested in a, in a rare amplifier that can put out a hell of, a hell of a lot of power, both of these are up for sale. So I just kind of wanted to give you a quick overview of them, you know, give you a better look at them, because there's probably not much available online to look at these bad boys. We'll start with the Human Rain. Its main feature, obviously, is this really cool metal sort of design that they've got going on over the top here with the face coming out. Our material, it's it's hard, it's definitely not plastic. I've got a feeling it might be aluminium. Because when I flip it up here, like this, you can see like underneath and down the side here like the machine marks where it's been machined out. It's definitely not steel, because it's not heavy enough. It is definitely very heavy as a whole, but I don't think it's quite heavy enough for it to be a solid piece of steel. So I think this is machined aluminium. So while we're looking at this, uh, I've got this up like this, I'll show you the side. So we've got four gauge, Power and ground inputs, remote input, channel one and two inputs, those look like those are eight gauge speaker terminals. And then we've got, geez, what's this? Hawkins. Zero to nine dB boost, crossover, channels one and two crossover, channels three and four crossover. And then we've got input levels for channels one, two, three, and four. So that's one interesting thing about this amp versus a lot of other ones. This has individual gains per channel not per set or per whole amp it's got one one channel sorry one gain per channel and then we've got RCA level input channels one and two as well as balanced five volt whatever that is that must connect to some special head unit and we got come on focus channels three and four input RCA balanced five volt again and then a line output as well and that's pretty much everything on the side there's nothing Around this side, there is a little window there. Same on that side, and then on the back, there is another window, but again, nothing to see down there. Oh yes, so on the top here, this is where you can do all your controlling. So obviously you've got Phillips uh, screws here for the all the connections, and then we've got a power indicator, zero to 180 degree phase switch. Uh, this one is channels one and two, stereo mon, uh, oh, come on autofocus. So this one here, stereo mono 2, so dual mono I think, or, or low pass. This one up here, Hawkins bass control, subsonic, it's a wee bit hard to actually figure it out, it's quite, quite complex. Then we've got another one here for, oh, okay I see, so we've got channels 1 and 2 on the left here, stereo mono or low pass, and then we've got channels 3 and 4, stereo mono or low pass. And both of them say sum 3, 4, this on the right hand side of them. Not quite sure what that means. I'll have to leave that up to the comment section to explain it. Then over here we've got tracking crossover. Channels 1 and 2 in and out switch and low high range. I guess that's the um, type of input that you're using. So you've got low input for RCAs and high input for that uh, bus connector. Channels 3 and 4. Okay, we've got high pass in and out. Rear de-emphasis in and out. Don't ask me, sorry guys, I'm actually not a huge expert in this one. This is going to have to be a lot of comment section answers. Okay, here we go, here's the full input selector switch. So you've got full 3 and 4, full 1 and 2, or 1 and 2 tracking low pass. And you've got line out for full 1 and 2, 1 and 2 tracking low pass, or 3 and 4 low pass sum. And now you've got a whole bunch of switches per channel over here, balanced and unbalanced for both 
for channels 1, 2, 3 and 4 and a clip indicator for each channel as well. So actually quite a lot of technology, whoops, actually quite a lot of technology gone into this amp, very technical, very designed for a, you know, a super high end audio setup so you can adjust and uh, tweak every single little feature about it. I think what I might do now is flip it over and take the back off it and try and show you guys the inside. Okay, so I've taken the screws off the back. Something else I just noticed on the back here, guys. We've got like the uh, corresponding speaker holes and switch diagram and everything down here on the bottom as well. And then also down in the corner here, we've got HR4, so that's the model number. And then presumably this is the serial number, I think, because there's no stickers anywhere on this amplifier to give it like any authenticity or anything like that. So I'd say that that's the serial number printed onto it. And you can check that somehow. So I'm going to try and lift the lift the back off this. I'm going to have to put this camera down here while I try and lift this off. There we go. And there's the inside guys. So we've got a big power supply end down here with capacitors and coils. All the sound tuning at the, up there. Bunch more stuff down here. Here's the, here's the um, model number and serial number again on the circuit board. Sandstrom logo, human rain. I like these copper thread stands, that's what the back was screwed to. Actually less in here than I was expecting there to be, to be honest. But I like that they've got, you know, nice big chunky copper um, connectors for their power cables and speaker cables there. Something interesting just here, I'm not sure what that's about. Clip LED X channel 4. Honestly, I don't know what that's about. Really quite nice. Quite nice. Oh, something else written here. Written in either Chinese or Japanese, I'm not sure. Just a little piece of tape over the capacitors here. Yeah, cool. Alright, I'll chuck the back back on it. Okay, so I was halfway through talking about the Soundstream Tarantula, and then my camera died on me and didn't finish recording the file, so it's... It fucked up. I'm going to have to put that off for now. Back to what I was saying about the human rain. Where did I get up to? I got up to just uh, putting the cover back on. Yes, that's right. After I'd done that, I pointed out there's a nice Soundstream emblem on the front here, completely embossed into it, and the limited edition one up here that I didn't go over before, and that's got like a nice sort of uh, grazed chrome uh, layer on the top of the font there. I think that was pretty much everything I had talked about the human rain. Both of these uh, amplifiers are available for purchase both locally and internationally so if you are interested I'll actually put the email address in the description for talking about purchasing these and we'll go from there. Okay moving on to the Soundstream Tarantula. So this is the Soundstream Tarantula Monoblock Original 2000. I have the specifications sheet over here. Monoblock one channel 2000 watts RMS at 4 ohms or 2 ohms. You can read the rest of the specifications there for yourself. On the top here you got like a nice chrome mirror finish. These handles here are structural, they're not just there for show so you can lift and carry the thing by them which is quite cool. And then they got like this overhang flap here. So this is kind of designed to sit into a big um, slot. You can lift them in and out and things like that. And you almost wouldn't even need to screw them down, they're that heavy. So you got the nice big uh, 3D tarantula thing up here. It's, pretty, it's bigger than my hand so it's pretty big. And I've got a feeling this comes off, I'm not sure how, so that you can have it all open and exposed, or maybe you can put a different uh, emblem or something on there. Soundstream logo, and then you've got a couple of LEDs over here, a green and a red. Same thing here. And that's pretty much everything there is to the top. Just before I show you the rest of it, as you can see on the sides and the back, there's not really anything to see. Okay, on the front here, you've got your inputs, left and right, and balanced input, and then a left and right line output. Now these big speaker connectors, so these we got, this is the negative side for your speaker, for your subwoofer it would be, 4 gauge outputs, 2 slash 0 gauge inputs for your power supply for ground and positive 12 volts, remote uh, get, uh, remote input that's around about looks like sort of 12 to 8 gauge, I can't really tell, I think it's about 12 gauge, and then yeah 4 gauge positive speaker terminal output. So you can hook up obviously two woofers to this which is really cool individually or you can have, you know, a dual voice call sub, both with its, uh, each voice call, both with its own cable. And that's everything that there is on the bottom of it, or on the front. I'll uh, show you what's on the back side of it now. Okay, so not much on the back of it, mainly just this uh, diagram up here, which I will take a picture of and put at the end of the video and also on the Facebook page. And then down here, 
uh, this panel was on here before, but that I was I had that off and was talking, and then the camera cut out as I said, so that's why that's off. That alert, when you take that panel off, that gives you access to the screws and things that allow you to put the cable into the connectors for the speaker outputs, the power inputs, and things like that. That's how you get to those. And it's got a 300 amp fuse in there going from the 12 volt across to this other block here. Not 100% sure why, I think that's just where they, how they did the, decided to do the internal fuse. So the power just goes in, across, and then off to the power supply side of the amp. And then it says down there, fuse, 300 amp, everything like that. That's pretty much everything on the back of it, guys. I'm going to chuck that panel back on and see if I can get the uh, housing off this body somehow so we can see all the insides of it. Okay, so I've taken a bunch of screws off. Um, trying to figure out my way to get into this. First thing you notice is you take this panel off here and that's actually how you get to the controls for the amp. So you've got like, oh here we go, so this is input level, input level, amp clip, unbalanced slash balance for left, unbalanced slash balance for right, level, Hawkins subsonic, frequency, Q, low pass frequency, range high or low, power calibration, phase 0 to 180, power and status. So that's what all those things do. So I've taken the handles off, and there's also so the screws here holding this on, and then there's four more here which hold this whole panel on the bottom of it. And the lid does lift off, but I need to disconnect this panel from the lid. Now this should just come completely off, yes! Okay. Something else I noticed is that you can unscrew the two holding this thing on, the inputs, and then this just comes out of here and is attached with a ribbon cable so that's cool because you get like if, if something in this like blows I guess you can replace it it's modular and then in here this is the big panel that I just disconnected which has one two three ribbons holding it hang that there for now should be fine inside here we've got a huge heat sink and four big fans now whether or not this all this case lifts off now I'm not I'm not sure Hard to know. See, there's these wings down here which I've un undone from the outside here. And I think to get it all out, you have to take these wings off so that they can get past these lips. So there's one, two, three, four of them. So I'll try to do that now. Okay, so I undid those uh, four screws, got the little wings out that was holding it onto the side of the chassis here, and those screws there go through into this heat sink and also hold the fan mounts. On. So I've just got them sitting out on the side here. I'm going to try and really carefully lift this out, I think. I might put it over here where the human rain is, so I'll move that back a bit. Unplug the fans on one side. Unplug the fans on the other side. Holy crap. Set it down on the tech sink side. Oh my god. One empty tarantula chassis. Holy mother, far out, just, wow, that's cool. I think I'll take a picture of this while it's out. Something I just noticed is that I couldn't see any fets on this board. And then I looked down in between here, between the board and the heatsink, and all the fets are in there. It's going to be hard to see on the camera, but believe me, they're in there and there's quite a lot. They're all in line with these rails here, which go through to the heatsink, of which there is four. Two big rows of resistors, two rows of caps, you've got power supplies, I'm guessing, capacitor banks, coil banks. I'm not an electronics technician, so to be honest with you guys, I actually don't know what a lot of this stuff does. Alright, I'm getting nervous having it out of its case, so I'm uh, going to put it back in now. I think I actually found the best way to get this back in here safely, possibly how they spoke about how they do it in the factory. You have to, pr you have to sit the big heatsink side of this on a box, raised up a wee bit, and make sure you connect the fans because they connect on the bottom side of this so you have the fans in there connected and then you can lift the chassis on top of it and then it will sit down onto its mounting post and screw it, and then you can screw it in so i think that's what i'm going to do should work well that's it guys um yeah sorry i had to jump ahead a wee bit just because the camera ran out of battery so i used that time while it was charging up a wee bit to put the tarantula back together and also to take some photos of both of them to stick at the end of this video and on the Facebook page. So I hope you've enjoyed this video guys, I hope you've enjoyed seeing what actually is inside a uh, couple some of these, these beasts in the ants. It's been really enlightening to me, especially this one, I was quite interested by that. And uh, if you've got any questions about them, obviously ask me. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button so I know to make more videos like this showcasing interesting products. And as always guys, have a good day.